Hello, my name is Marcus Chavez and I'm with IFARA TV. Today we will be cable casting segments of the press conferences that were held during the 22nd CROI, which is the annual conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections, which took place in Seattle, Washington this year. This segment will be presented by Karina Butler, who is with Our Lady's Children's Hospital in Dublin, Ireland. Karina talks about the Breather Trial. The Breather Trial looks at scheduled antiretroviral treatment interruption, where ARTs are given five days on, two days off, compared to continuous ART. The goal of the trial looks to normalize the life experience of children on lifelong antiretroviral treatment. Thank you. So I presented the results of the Breather study on behalf of the Penta Treatment Network. And Breather was a strategy trial that looked at young people taking five days of their antiretrovirals every week with a weekend off or two days off compared with seven days per week. And this was the rationale behind this, or the, the aim for this, was to try and normalize the life experience for young people who have problems with uh, facing lifelong therapy, and particularly with adherence at the end of the first decade and through adolescence. Because of the secrecy and burden that often surrounds antiretrovirals, uh, children may be curtailed from going on sleepovers at weekends, Adolescents going out at the weekends often don't take their medicines with them because they don't want people to see it. And there is a real impact on uh, their social lives. So the thought was that if we could use some of the properties of some of the drugs that we now have that have long half-lives or stay in the body for a long time, that maybe it would be safe to give children very short breaks off in a controlled fashion. So that was what Breather was about. And this was a global non-inferiority uh, study, randomized study, carried out uh, in sites across Thailand, Africa, America, South America, and Europe. And overall, 199 young people were enrolled and divided between the two arms of short cycle therapy, where they had five days on and two days off, versus continuous therapy, where they took it in the standard fashion of seven days on and seven days off. And basically what we found, what we were looking for, was whether the virus would stay fully suppressed throughout that time. So what we found was between the two arms that really there was no difference in rates of viral suppression between the two arms, that the children taking uh, the weekend breaks were remained suppressed throughout the study. Similarly to a whole range of secondary endpoints looking to see if there was any other indicators that this type of strategy could cause harm in terms of their immune status or in terms of inflammation. Um, we looked and didn't see any difference between the two arms of the study. Okay. What we did see was, similarly, there was no difference in terms of the number of adverse events between the two arms. But what we did see was there's slightly less adverse events related to drugs reported in those who were on the short cycle therapy arm versus the continuous therapy arm. Overall, the children stayed in the study very well, and most people in the short cycle therapy, 98% stayed on their allocated regimen, uh, compared with about 88% in the continuous therapy. So, no matter how hard we tried to look, we really didn't see any difference in outcomes between the arms. In terms of the children whose viral load actually rebounded a little bit, there were only six in the short cycle therapy arm versus seven in the continuous therapy arm. And in fact, the small difference that was there favored the short cycle therapy. So in conclusion, we found that a short cycle therapy or five days per week using a drug with a ha long half-life of favorins on children, and it is important to say that they had never failed treatment before, um, was non-inferior to continuous therapy with no difference in virological outcome, in CD4 counts, in adverse events between the two arms. And what the implications for this are is that at this stage, this was a study just over a 48-week time period, and clearly we need to look at the more longer-term follow-up to ensure that it's safe. And most of these children have enrolled in the continuing study, which will go on for another two years to see whether, in fact, these results can be confirmed at that time. Thank you.